Okay, so here's the situation. You've been given a lot of PDFs with not a lot of time to learn everything you need. You know AI exists, but AI doesn't know what you're trying to learn. Or imagine you could have a conversation with that character you've admired for your whole life. Let me introduce you to Ned Flanders' GPT. Stupid sexy Flanders! But first, some time ago, I made a video discussing how you can use ChatGPT as a learning resource and use and key to retain that information. And today, we're able to go a little further with the introduction of custom GPTs. Which, if you don't already know, are these little plugins powered by ChatGPT that you will eventually be able to buy and sell on the recently announced marketplace. Previous to this new feature, we gained access to custom instructions, which allows you to fine-tune ChatGPT to behave in a certain way without having to ask it every time we start a new conversation. You can also provide it context so it knows a little more about you. I haven't used the context bit personally, just because it feels a bit weird telling an AI a bunch of personal information about myself, but I have used custom instructions for certain tasks I didn't know how to do otherwise. For example, in my last couple of videos, I've started to hardcode subtitles to the bottom of my videos. And for those who don't already know, you can export them on YouTube and open them up in Notepad to see how they're laid out. So I opened up a new conversation, copied and pasted the first subtitle, and then I modified it how I like it, and asked it to explain the difference back to me. When I was happy, I asked it to rewrite the explanation as a custom instruction that I can save, so I don't have to keep explaining the problem. This is just an example of how you can use custom instructions in a pinch and don't know where else to turn. There were easier and quicker ways to do exactly what I wanted to do, and in that specific case, you can use a website called HappyScribe, which is free. But there was also CapRing, but you can also do it in the 2022 edition of Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm not sure exactly which version it was introduced. One limit to this feature is that you can only use one set of custom instructions at a time, but if you're on the pay tier, which is $20 a month, not including tax, you get access to custom GPTs, which is what today's video is primarily about. To create a custom GPT, we can just click Create a GPT, and the first step will be simply describe what we want it to do. This process is more advanced than a simple custom instruction. The easiest way to get this done is to just tell ChatGPT what you want and it will take care of the entire process for you from start to finish. But if we click configure here, we can see exactly what's going on behind the scenes. We've got the name, description, instructions and the main icon. But we've also got conversation starters, which the user can click before having to type anything out. We've got knowledge, which is here for anything that isn't already part of its training data, and whatever is attached here will be prioritised over anything else. Back when I worked in customer service for all these work from home jobs, I'd have loved something like this. You'll need to make sure you're the only one who can see this, of course, and I'll show you how later on in the video. But from then, you'll have your own personal assistant. Lastly, we've got the ability to browse the internet that we can toggle on and off. We can allow it to generate images in Dolly, which could get a little distracting if I'm honest. And then we've got this one, which gives your custom GPT the flexibility to interpret Python code. I say Python specifically because on this interview I found on customgpt.ai, Olin summarizes that it's just GPT able to use and run Python code. Lastly, we've got actions down here, which will allow your custom GPT to act as an agent and perform actions using a platform called Zapier. Okay, let's go back to create because I do want to show you how this actually works. Let's do something really simple, like adopt the personality and beliefs of a fictional character like Ned Flanders from The Simpsons. I'm not going to bother creating Donald Trump or someone famous because I know ChatGPT will probably just throw a wobble up. And if it doesn't, it may violate a usage policy, specifically mentioning the impersonation of another individual or organisation without consent or legal rights. So let's begin with this. You will adopt the personality of Ned Flanders from The Simpsons, you will show the same behaviours and beliefs of Ned Flanders, and when appropriate, you will reference events from the show that happened to Ned from his point of view. However, you do not have any knowledge that you are a fictional character, as you believe Ned Flanders is a real person, and that is you. ChatGPT will suggest a name for you. Most of the time, I won't care, but I had the name Ned GPT in my head for a while. Then I will assume it will use Dolly to generate an icon, and that looks like a flawless depiction of Ned Flanders. Now it's going to ask us to refine some details. I already described what I want, but it's worth repeating just to get the message across. 
how does Ned actually assist the user? It will make a quick assumption on what we'll say, so I'll just say that I'll do both of these suggested things, and I think it would be useful to provide lore from the actual show. Now it's just going to ask if there's anything out of character for Ned that I'd like him to avoid. I know there's that one episode that explains his backstory and why he's so patient, but for the most part I'm going to go with him refusing to get angry or show hostility. Not like GPT would anyway by default. He'll show devout faith in his religion. Not even sure if that makes sense, but it sounded fancy in my head. And if someone asks something Ned probably wouldn't know the answer to, he'll make it up. The next questions here just seem to be clarifying what I said. Now it looks like we're done on the left half, so let's go over to configure. I'll trust all the basic stuff for now. For a funny little experiment like this, you probably won't need to upload anything, as the vast training data collected by OpenAI is likely to have numerous examples of what you need. If you're going to take this incredibly serious, and have every single piece of information uploaded to NedGPT, as soon as it's hosted on the internet, then this is where you put it. Finally, I'm sure Ned Flanders can look stuff up on the internet, but in this case, it would be a bit like Jim Carrey in the Truman Show having access to news articles about himself. And in this case, I won't enable image generation either. Okay, and let's test it out. On the right hand side, here is a preview, and it's generated four conversation starters for us, and we can click this one here. I'm not sure why Ned GPT decided to use the name mod here, and I don't know if the rest of this response relates to an episode from the show. If you want to save this, by the way, you can click the green button at the top right, and you can select the visibility of your new GPT. If you've come up with something amazing that you'd like the world to see, you can have it visible to everybody. If on the other hand, you've created a personal assistant to help you with confidential or copyrighted material, you can select only me. To enable the marketplace after paying for the upgraded tier, you have to do a few things first. First you'll need to enable beta features in the settings by clicking here and then here. And then make sure your profile exists here and that the slider is enabled. Finally, you'll need to click up here where it says what model of ChatGPT you're using. Currently either 3.5 or 4 and click products. It'll give you an information card, but I don't know if I'll be able to bring that up for the sake of demonstration. It'll then lead you to this database of sorts, with hundreds of custom-made GPTs people had created. In fact, I bet if I type in Anki, yeah, flashcard generator. Let's install this and back out of here. Whatever you've installed should automatically be selected from the drop-down menu. But if it's not, you can just click here and reselect it. Let's type in Please provide me with an Anki deck that introduces Ned Flanders from The Simpsons. I'll follow this link here as instructed, and there's a big download button here, and this is one of the few times I will trust a giant button that says download on it. Cool, downloaded as a TXT, so we'll see if I can need to import it. Back in Anki, I'll create my Ned Flanders deck. File, import, select the name. Looks good so far. I'll back out of that, study, and that's perfect. I mean, you need to be a little more specific in your upfront card, because just asking who he is might be a little broad, but you get the picture, it works. So when will OpenAI provide this revenue stream that will allow people to make bank of their custom GPTs? Well, after looking this up, I'm seeing one source that says it will currently be limited to the US and another saying that they plan to launch this revenue scheme in the first quarter of this year. I will make another video covering Zapier, but for now I wanted to highlight the use of having a customer GPT, how to make one, and the announcement of OpenAI's very own marketplace. I can see that Microsoft Copilot has joined it on the font. When I access the interface, I see two buttons at the top, chats and plugins. Chat has five different things I can select, which I assume will just work in the same way as the explore screen in ChatGPT. Then we've got the plugins side, which offers a bit more, like shopping assistance, 
reservations and price comparison. Personally, I feel like they should stick to either saying GPT or plugin, because I can imagine it will confuse a lot of people. I would imagine Google is yet to implement something similar to Bard and Gemini. I can't see why they wouldn't. Whether they'll actually call them GPTs or plugins, who knows. Maybe they'll go with extensions. As I always say though, that's why I'll leave it for now. I'm a bit of an Anki fanatic. This will be the third video that mentions it, so I'll leave links to the other two down below. As I said though, I do plan to make another video about Zapier, so please look forward to that. And don't forget to have fun. Have you made any of your own GPTs? Let me know down in the comments. And of course, I hope you have a wonderful week, and thanks for watching. Bye now.